Greetings Nigeria and my brothers and sisters in Nigeria and children in the Lord and friends. Uh, it's a joy and a pleasure to join with you through the means of internet, uh, even though we are sitting thousands of miles uh, away from each other. Uh, I am as excited as you are to learn about the message of uh, godly wisdom and the excellency thereof. Uh, so just to give you a little intro, my name is Kalpna Sharma. I am originally from India, came to know the Lord there 39 years ago, and I also am from Nairobi, Kenya, East Africa, uh, as well as right now I am from the suburb in Chicago, United States. And uh, before we go ahead and learn about it, let's bow before the Lord and ask His blessing. Dear God, we come before you and thank you and praise your holy name. We pray that you will help us to uh, learn about your wisdom and the excellency thereof and see the perfect example uh, of that wisdom who is Jesus Christ our Lord in whose name we pray. Amen. So the verse you have chosen is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. We do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature uh, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Um, interesting. Uh, I think uh, I see this thing, the message of wisdom, and among the mature. Uh, and Ecclesiastes seven twelve also says that the wisdom and money they both shelter, but the excellency of wisdom is that it preserves the life of the one who possesses it. So, what message do we have of wisdom? Um, I would say it's simplicity um, you know as I was writing these notes I uh, this is what God put on my heart that discovering godly wisdom in God's world and God's word requires simplicity humility and receptivity discovering uh, hidden wisdom in God's world and God's word requires simplicity humility and receptivity. I say simplicity because even you know when you when we go to God's Word can you see these are two and small little creatures okay it says and the Bible says in Proverbs 6 6 that go to the ant you sluggard consider her ways and be wise so even the ants can teach us to be wise small little ants uh, they gather their food in summer and so you know we are to learn from them but then, you know, when that gathering of ours uh, turns into hoarding, then God has to also teach us. And then we worry that God has to teach us. And so uh, in the New Testament, you see, Jesus said, look at the birds uh, and we can learn from the birds. Uh, the, Jesus said that, you know, we look at the birds and see that they don't have a mic. Um, this is my version. They don't have a microwave. They don't have a refrigerator. And they don't gather and, and, and store in a barn, and yet our Heavenly Father provides for them. And Jesus says we are not to worry. So even when, we, when the hoarding, uh, you know, from gathering, the hoarding becomes our business, and we don't, we're not generous with what God has entrusted us with, you know, we are to gather, but that doesn't mean that we can depend on it. We still have to depend on God. If God tells us to bless someone with it, we are to bless other people too. And so, we, yeah, there is wisdom in simplicity of simple stuff. In it. And then you remember Jeremiah was told to go to a potter and see the clay. And God asked, can I not do with you what, I can, what a potter can do with the clay? You know, are, are we flexible where we can say, okay, God, remold me, uh, you know, break me, remold me and, and shape me into a person that you want me to be. So there's wisdom in the simplicity of God's world and God's word. And they go together. Um, you know, when you look at the wisdom of the rulers, like they say, the rulers of those days didn't understand, and so that's why they crucified the Lord. Uh, the next verse says that. And I see that the rulers of that day crucified the Lord, and the rulers, some rulers of our day, commercialized Jesus. And so you see, they crucified Jesus, we commercialize him. And have you ever seen how... Uh, during the Christmas time, especially, you know, the poorest of poor nativity, uh, 
is supposed to be, uh, you know, simple, and yet people make money out of poverty. The most poorest thing that God used in order to take birth, it's been priced very heavily. Or have you seen so many, even the t-shirts and so many other things. Now, I understand the talents and people putting their hours into all these things, but the simplicity, you know, and by just branding it Christianity, and then they make a lot of money out of it, and that's not simplicity. And so we look back at simplicity. Um, someone has said that it is so simple to, uh, it's so simple to be happy, but it's so difficult to be simple. And I would say, it, you know, it's like, you can rephrase it, it is so simple to be wise, but so difficult to be simple. You know why? Because instead of all the simple stuff, we want to look at more and more uh, uh, eloquent and dazzling uh, stuff. Uh, even the preachers sometimes that we want from mega church, renowned people uh, with theology degrees and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong uh, in and of it, you know. Definitely there are godly men and women who have wisdom to teach us. But if we are going to depend on that and not on God's power, then that becomes a problem. And so to be, to be simple, uh, to discover God's wisdom, uh, it's uh, something, even I was reading Oswald Chambers. Oswald Chambers says this, and he says, you know, uh, he wants, God wants us to unlearn something. His purpose in using trials and clouds and stuff like that is to simplify our beliefs. He says, until our relationship with God is exactly like that of a child, a relationship. So the question he asks, is our relationship with God becoming more simpler, more simple than it has ever been? And that's a question. You know why? Because the more knowledge we attain, uh, the knowledge, you know, it makes us puffed up. And uh, so we need to be careful because it, it can be just collecting of data and, you know, you can continue having more and more and it will never be enough. Uh, also, you know, you can have understanding, but understanding and knowledge alone doesn't make you wise. Uh, just the two, two of them don't make you wise. Why? Uh, you know, the one classic example of that is uh, King Solomon. Uh, you know that he was told the wisest king and even the bible says that at the beginning of his kingship god blessed him with the uh, wisdom but he misappropriated it he misused it and so you can see that he collected and he's piled up and he's gathered so much of books and proverbs and wise sayings but uh, he did not practice it and so he didn't live it you know it's like bible also says that you know there are people by uh, in Romans, it says that uh, proclaiming to be wise, they became fools. And so we can see that proclaiming to be wise, he was a fool in so many areas. So the question today is, uh, in what areas of my life I'm proclaiming to be wise, but I am living like a fool? Uh, we need to ask God to help us... Um, tackle that and see where we are living in uh, duplicity and I believe one beautiful example of this is given in James you know James chapter 3 verses 13 to 18 and this is what James says who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you have a bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. For such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For wherever you have bitter envy and selfish ambition, there you have uh, disorder and every evil practice. But wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure, pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen? So James, see, James also starts off by saying, who is wise and understanding? Uh, you see, he doesn't use the word knowledge. Uh, the knowledge, you know, is collect, you know, getting more knowledge is collecting data and uh, trying to interpret it in understanding. But being wise is something different. So what is being wise? You know, being wise... I have read and learned that being wise means doing, being, thinking, and walking just as if God was in my shoes. That's right. 
So Jesus is our perfect example that, you know, walk like Jesus. What would Jesus do in my situation? What would Jesus think? How would Jesus be? Uh, and that is exactly what, walk as Jesus walked, that is wisdom. Um, so James goes on to say that, let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Now, here again, you know, the wise person's life shows by the good life they live and the deeds they do in humility. Now, we know that Paul says that we are saved by grace, um, but we are saved to do good works. Verse 10 also says that. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 talks about being saved by grace. And then verse 10 says we are saved to do good works. So if you have the spirit of Jesus Christ in you, the good works will follow.